Hi, I'm Monica Bay and I'm here with Ian Campbell. And Ian and I have, have almost had parallel learning curves on eDiscovery. Absolutely. As, uh, as the editor of Law Technology News, I met you probably on my second day. <laughs> and you've been a wonderful resource through the year and you've taught me a lot. And we're here at the University of Florida and we're doing an eDiscovery project. Tell, tell our students who are watching who may not really understand e-discovery and might think that you know that's something the girls do, or the, you know that it's that's a, it's not lawyering. Yeah. How wrong they are, and how the technology is changing, and how um, over the years it's becoming more and more and more crucial to be a, a, a litigator. But it's a great question. When I first got involved in, in the business, it was boxes of paper. It was boxes of paper that were coming out of a file cabinet. And uh, you know, back gone in the day. Gone are the days of uh, where's your stuff? Oh, it's in drawer number three, and it's in this file folder. Um, that sort of morphed. I'm going to say in around 2002, 2003, to um, all my stuff is here on my hard drive of my computer or maybe it's on this backup tape. Um, that's morphed even more now. In fact, some of the sessions we're doing today uh, specifically talking about the fact that my, my data is no longer in my file cabinet. My data is no longer on my laptop. It's now somewhere else. And uh, the ability to kind of bring that back together and aggregate it with data from other sources. And now some stuff is even in the cloud that's for right. people. That's right. Yeah. And, and But all of that data has to come back um, to a central location. And somebody really has to go through it. And it, it certainly changed because, again, back in the day, uh, the idea was you would scan it. You would image it, you would OCR it, you would pay a team of people, um, a pretty redundant task to go in and, you know, what's the date, type it in, you know, who's it from, type it in. Uh, that data can now all be captured electronically directly out of Word files and PDFs. And um, uh, now there's phenomenal tools to be able to go in and filter the data extremely quickly, including a lot of great analytics tools where I can go in and do a search for bank deposit and it will find a document that said Monica put money in the account. Uh, it didn't have the word bank and it didn't have the word deposit, but it knows that that document is talking about that subject. And it's just, it's made it so much more interesting to be able to take that raw data and do things with it and, and find some real nuggets of uh, related to a case. And one of the key things that I've noticed over the last few years is the emphasis on early case assessment. And it would seem to me, if I was trying to convince a student, that if you don't know these tools, you're going to be on the back list yeah. and you're not going to get to be the litigator you want to be because you can't just hand it off to some some uh, uh, person who knows nothing right. well, about uh, the, 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 the problem is that, uh, to be frank there's too much information yes um, exactly. you know we were talking last night at dinner about the fact that here we are a couple of us have got Fitbits on it's tracking my heart rate and it's like well, well so what I mean, there's, there's no relevance to really anything other than me personally, but it's there and it's information that I could get if I really wanted to get to it. So again, when it started to become um, a lot of work became um, email based, Yes. Um, the volume of email information is, is very, very large. And uh, we've got one project right now that literally has 19 billion pages of information in it. And uh, that, that's information that nobody is going to go through that and go next, next, next and read every document. You need good tools to go through it. But to early case assessment, the the other challenge is when you go and grab a hard drive, a good 85% of what's on that hard drive has nothing, nothing to do with the case. And you need to very quickly go in and say, that's all computer operating system information, don't care. And then when you actually get your hands on the mail, you can go, oh, a bunch of ESPN data, don't care. A bunch of stuff before 2004, don't, don't care. care. And um, those broad swipes make a big, big difference in being able to focus in very, very quickly. But as a lawyer, as a student becoming a lawyer, um, you need to be able to understand that. Otherwise, what will happen is you get overburdened with information and then you just can't digest it. There's just too much information there for you to actually get to the, get to the information you need. Now I have to ask you, because we've both been in our journey together, what's the best or most interesting case you ever encountered? That would have to be a project we did around uh, 03, 04 with NASA. Um, uh, you may remember the Columbia disaster, the, the tragedy yes. of with the, the space shuttle um, uh, coming apart, the heat tile problem that they had, and, the, and uh, uh, certainly a, a tragic, loss, tragic, tragic loss. loss of life. Uh, they came to us and they said, look, we've got experts around the world. We need to get the shuttle program back up and running again. How, how do we use your software? And I remember, and I won't do credit to, to, to the Houston accent, but I remember being on the phone with a little triangle in the middle, and, the, and he said to me, so let me just understand, we have experts from around the world, and they can 
all come in using your software and collaborate and look at the same document collection. Yes, sir, that's how it works. And all they need is the internet and a browser, and they can come in and they can access that information and help us get this program back up and running. Yes, sir, that's how it works. Well, how do you folks handle extraterrestrial access to the data? <laughs> And, and I remember I, we put them on mute and we kind of looked at each other and went, how do we answer this question? And uh, we said, so exactly what are you trying to do? Well, we got a bunch of people up there on the space station and they're very bright people and they have nothing to do. And they're very motivated to get the program back up and running because otherwise there's no way for us to get them home. And um, so we actually figured out a way to do it where they came in from outer space. They hit the iConnect system. They were able to go in and, and collaborate on, on the document collection. They put together the return to flight project. Uh, that document went to Senate, it approved the shuttle program, and they were able to send a space shuttle back up to get them off the space station. So the, for me, that, that's just a story that kind of goes, wow, the technology really can make a difference, and we actually saved lives. That so, is so fabulous. Yeah. And I, I think the other secret on this as we wrap up is, sometimes change is so overwhelming that you go, I'm never going to get this, and sometimes it's so subtle that all of a sudden you realize, wow, I'm not using my 8-track anymore. <laughs> it, it just amazes me. I think that has been something that in my career has kept me absolutely engaged because the change is so fast yeah, I, I, and so I, I, interesting. Yeah. I, I, I think the interesting part is going to be the blend of uh, what we're seeing now with things like Oculus Rift and uh, people being able to use uh, gestures with, uh, with an Xbox controller. And I can absolutely see a day when I'll be sitting there and doing nothing more than doing this doing this and doing yep. that with my Oculus Rift in as I sit in my kitchen and I'll be doing document review. And that's not going to happen tomorrow, but I can see over, over the horizon and I, I agree with you. I think the ability to sort of blend together really cool things that are happening in technology with the, the, with, with the legal application of that uh, is going to make things very, very exciting. On and the Internet of Things, which is the next panel we're going to be taking, yeah. which won't help the people reading this, but, but will be interested in it, yeah. is going to deal with some of those exact things like yeah. everything from having uh, the the uh, what's the name of that new thermostat nest? Nest, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. which it, let's say somebody gets killed in a homicide. Bingo! You've got data that that was done completely yeah. without human yeah. human touching it. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, we could go forever. Ian, thank you so much thank for you. being here, and we're at the University of Florida. I'm Monica Bay.